So we've got a proposal on the ballot, the very long they said two pages, but it's two pages front and back, really four pages on the ballot, right, Joe? Mm-hmm. Uh, called the TIP Workers Protection Act, also known as Prop 138. It is a confusing constitutional amendment proposal that is meant to be business friendly in Arizona to restaurant tours, but is really not very friendly to the majority of TIP workers. So if you vote no on it, things stay the way they are. Yes. Correct. That is the way I look at most propositions. If you vote no, things will stay the same way. Generally if, speaking, yeah. If you if you vote yes on this, though, something changes. Mm-hmm. And math gets involved. Oh man, is it confusing and, too? And I will admit that I even got tripped up. And I, I'll tell you right now, I voted no on this last night because uh. I I filling out my ballot. I decided. No, this is just too confusing, and I don't think this actually will make more money for people. I think it would benefit restaurant owners if this went into effect. It does, but how about if I make this argument, Joe? What if I were to say if it benefits restaurant owners and it lowers their overhead, Mm -hmm. doesn't that mean that it's cheaper for you to go out to eat? Theoretically, yes. Okay, so but what about practically? Um, Practically... Restaurant owners don't need to pass on any sort of cost savings or keep things cheaper for you or I when we go out to eat. Yeah, as long as they're competitive with their neighbor restaurant, right? right? As long as they're... I mean, yeah. if if Bob's is making eggs and toast and they're charging $10, or $10 for the meal and you're charging 6 you could easily charge close to 10 and... You make could, a little bit more money. You could charge eight and still be the cheapest place, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree. So there's no guarantee that restaurants are going to pass the savings on to you. The argument would be that the guy charging 10 would have to lower his prices or go out of business. But Which is not necessarily true, though, too. We've eaten at some, we've eaten, both of us, I'm sure, have eaten at places that are very expensive and not as good as cheaper places, right? Yeah, and some, yet the expensive places are an expensive part of town and they stay in business for a long time. Some people may prefer the name of the $10 place. Some people yeah. may prefer the taste. Any number of reasons. But it doesn't seem like in the food service industry that I know that businesses are competing that much to lower the cost to bring in more customers. Doesn't Look at fast like food lowering. prices lately. Yeah. They just skyrocketed. Yeah. And have you seen the ads for Chili's that says, we're cheaper than McDonald's? I have and not I think that's seen great. that. Yeah. Uh-uh. They've got their eleven ninety nine meal. It's like a burger, fries, and a, and a soft drink. I didn't and, realize go, and it's a were, real burger. They were bringing up the fast food. Yeah, I that. think it's okay. I think it's smart. Mm-hmm. But it's not like McDonald's goes, oh, my gosh, we're going to go out of business because of Chili's. Yeah, one dollar Big Macs today. Nope, doesn't happen. No, no. So Prop One Thirty Eight, as we mentioned, is confusing. One of the uh, board members of the Arizona Restaurant Association, his name is Grant Kruger, said that he would not immediately decrease his staff's base wages, even though if this passes, he could. Mm-hmm. He says it will instead mean that he lowers pay increases over time. So how does that work? Math. All right. <laughs> math. As we all know, don't do math on the radio. But we're going to. Let me try to do something. I'm going to try to simplify this as much as I can because the bill itself is written confusing. It is written to be a bad math story problem from fourth grade. And I will try not to make it more confusing. Okay. At some point, our minimum wage is going to go to $20 an hour. Agreed? Yes. I mean, it just is. That's At some point, it's happening. Yeah, it was like 7 bucks. Not too long ago. Decade, two decades ago. Right. It's going up. It will. I mean, that's just how inflation Mm -hmm. works in general. So it will hit $20 an hour. Yes. The way the law is written right now, if minimum wage is $20 an hour, then restaurants only need to pay their tipped workers $17. Mm -hmm. $3 below minimum wage. That's it. That's it. Done. Story's over. That's how it works today. So when we go to $20 an hour, minimum wage for tipped workers will be $17. As, lo- as long as the tips get them to 20 Yeah, yeah, you can't pay them less than $20. Right. right. Mm-hmm. Okay, which means $3 an hour in tips, and you'd have to be at a really slow place to not get your $3 an hour. Okay. It happens not too often. All right. Though. Yep. When the minimum wage goes to $20 an hour, mm-hmm. if this passes, restaurants would only have to pay their their uh, wait staff $15, 15 an hour. As long as? As long as the wait staff was getting at least... $22 an hour with tips. So theoretically, if customers are coming through the doors yes, and or or tipping more, if yep. you or I show up and we're in a generous mood, we we have a particularly well, good experience. Remember, minimum wage is up, inflation up, mm-hmm. uh, probably menu prices are up too. So then 
they theoretically could make some more money. They would get $22 as opposed to just the 20 Great point. If they are somebody who doesn't make very, if they are that person, like you said, not very many people don't get up to the $20 an hour. Mm -hmm. If they're that person that doesn't get very good tips and they're at $21 an hour, then yes, the restaurant would have to make sure they get to 22 So they're always going to make more than minimum wage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whereas the way the law stands right now, you could conceivably only make minimum wage. Right. All right. So let's look forward even further. Let's go to the day when it turns to $40 an hour. Okay. Okay. Yep. That uh, that might be 30 years from now. Mm -hmm. Could be more than that. Yep. But at some point, it'll hit $40 an hour. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now they only have to pay you 30. Under the current rule, they'd have to pay you 37. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Under this law, they only have to pay you 30. So, so long as you made $42 an hour. So let me ask you, where is the harm in that? Why, why is it bad for restaurant workers to pay less? For why is it bad to pay restaurant workers or, less? Or why is it bad for restaurant owners? Yeah. To pay depends on your perspective. If you want the restaurant owner to mm -hmm. be able to pay their employees twenty five percent below minimum wage, because the customers would would make up to theoretically get it to let's say forty dollars an hour. Assuming 42. that. Okay, so otherwise the restaurant owner does have to get it to forty. So here's here we go. Mm -hmm. All right, so. In our in the scenario of when the minimum wage finally gets to forty dollars an hour, and yes. your restaurant owner would only have to pay thirty dollars an hour, yep. so long as you made twelve bucks an hour in tips, up to forty two dollars an hour. Okay, great. Yep. So let's suppose you make um, fifteen dollars an hour in tips. So you're up to forty five an hour. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Ta da! Except that under the old system, where you're starting at thirty seven and you're making fifteen dollars in tips, now you're up to fifty two bucks an hour. <laughs> so if you're a restaurant worker, you're going, I just took a $7, $7 an hour shave on this. And the reason that this works out well for them and the reason that the Restaurant Association says this isn't something I'm going to do right away, this is something I'm going to, I'm going to make money, I'm going to save money over time is they used a percentage when they talked about how much less they can pay an employee, but they used a hard dollar amount when they talked about how much more over minimum wage the employee has to make. Here's your analogy. Let me see if I can simplify this even just a little bit more. You go to work for a company in 1995. They start you at the national average of 1350 an hour. That's how much the average pay was in 1995. Okay. Okay. Not the minimum wage, the average. The average, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then they tell you, we're going to give you a 50 cent raise every year. And in 1995, that sounds pretty good because that's about a 7% raise. <laughs> that's pretty good, right? You're getting almost 7%. That first time. That first year. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you're getting... A little less than 7%, but you're still doing way better than the cost of living increases. You're actually ahead of everyone else. Your raises are coming fast and furious. Mm -hmm. However, that starts to catch up over time. And if you still worked at that same place today that you did in 1995 at that 50 cent an hour increase, you'd be making $28 an hour, which is below the current average wage. Current average wage right now is about 31 bucks an hour. Yeah, that 7% becomes a lot less than 7%. It's less than 2% now. Pretty quick. So in 30 years, suddenly, by playing the math game, restaurants are actually at a position where they're paying, they're able to pay their tip workers significantly less, assuming that the tip workers are making up with tips. And their tipped worker could actually be making a lot more money if we just stayed under the system that we are now. Exactly what it could be. So it all depends on your perspective. If you're a tipped worker, you got to think toward the future. If you're a business person, you probably think, you know, this could be very helpful for me. Which is why the name on this, the Tipped Workers Protection Act, seems very deceptive. Thanks for watching the Chris and Joe Show. Click to see more from Chris and Joe and tap the button in the middle to subscribe to KTAR News.